Rogers Center. Movies at real physical stores becoming a thing of the past. Now some of the biggest movie rental stores closing their doors or are teetering on bankruptcy. At that time, everybody was opening video stores. There was one every other block. Pittston Video. Jumbo Video. Four Star Video. King Video. A guy bootlegging VHS out of a black van. We were renting several hundred a day. Paying a hundred dollar membership fees. A thousand pieces on a weekend day. Five dollars to rent a movie for one night. Once I would get a, a late fee at one store, I would just go and get a membership at another. Full semi-full of CED just to be delivered to our one store. The need for product was so great. Not that many people originally were doing these direct-to-video movies. Distributors wanted everything. Back then, with the right cover, a distributor could have sold my birthday video. A lot of times they were willing to offer you contracts sight unseen. I could sell 30,000 units of my bar mitzvah film. They sold 32,000 units and I got paid, um, trying to remember the exact amount, nothing. They were holding the master hostage, making money, and no money was coming back to the producers. They said, well, we are going to give you an advance, but we're not going to actually give it to you in the form of a payment. We're going to spend the advance on improving your movie. Now they were into the movie 20 grand versus my 10 grand, so now Panorama suddenly is the majority owner of the movie. He said, you know what, I live in Canada. Why don't you just zoom in? One of the producers walked into the office of the, the distributor and uh, snuck in and went back where all the tapes were and all the masters were and lifted the tape, uh, the master, and walked out the door with it. We weren't getting our money from our distributors, so I went on national TV with my lead actress and I got her to cry on camera. And we got paid. Well, we couldn't get the deal we wanted, so we converted a truck, hit the road, and went factory direct. Home entertainment has never seen the likes of this before. of a shabby, hole-in-the-wall kind of place with a, a shower curtain for their adult section. The early days of the video industry attracted a whole range of folks, people who saw opportunity to make some quick bucks. When you call these places like mom and pop, I mean, it's really, you're being kind. The thief and hustler would, would be better. It was uh, carrying three guns on them <laughs> if it is in Detroit. We had somebody um, with a cast, literally stuff some adult movies into his cast. Usually you'd think if you go into a video store back then and they have your movie on the shelf, that's something you know you want to get excited about and want to let everybody in the video store know about. But she said, that's your movie? And I said, yeah, I directed it. And I just got just an intense, intense tongue lashing from this woman. This was the most appalling film she'd ever seen, screaming about how awful and cheap it was. This is not even a movie. What is this? We used to joke that the video rental store was the greatest bait and switch operation that there was. People would come in for The uh, Godfather and they would wind up renting Bloodsuckers from Outer Space. The very worst heat damage we ever had was a, a Canadian customer came in and rented three X-rated movies. And because he wouldn't have been able to take them across the border, he decided he would put them under the hood of his car. <laughs> and so, of course, when he came back, he came back with these pretty much globs. The clerk that ran the place, she wouldn't stock titles like Faces of Death because she had been in a car accident. Workers killed in a traffic accident here in Anaheim, Barbara Regal, KFWB News. Thank you very much, Barbara Regal. A major decision was handed down in Los Angeles today concerning the use of home videotape recordings. Major because so many people these days are buying and using VTRs in their home. We're going to be talking right now with a gentleman who publishes uh, I guess it's a magazine called Video File to join in our conversation. The big movie studios 
had no idea that people would want to collect movies. The idea that you would want to see a movie, which, which takes up a couple hours of your time, over and over again was completely foreign to them. So they didn't consider the possibility that they could sell these movies on tape. The studios were not healthy at that particular point in time, so they didn't necessarily want to spend the money. And they didn't really think it was ever going to last. Consequently, they were threatened by people who were recording these movies to watch in their own homes. And the FBI and the uh, motion picture industry were all monitoring our ads. The biggest question of the early 80s, beta or VHS? The graveyard of consumer electronics is littered with the bodies of dozens and dozens of home video formats. Cartrevision. 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 Hello, I am Cartrevision. The tapes were manufactured so you could only watch it once. Tape, you had to take it back to the dealership and they would rewind it for you. CED just certified electronic dud. Really a technical achievement. Vinyl discs, they were like an LP, except they had five times as many grooves. 200 times the data density. Sometimes they'd speed up parts of the movie. The Star Wars, they sped that one up to like maybe 2%. I mean, you could tell, it was sped up enough that the music sounded weird. Not, not really that noticeable. And pretty much every movie skipped. This came to accept that, you know, let's go, these discs are just going to skip every now and then. I mean, they said, no, no. Our research indicates that people don't care about that. We were surrounded by pod people who were completely convinced that CED had no flaws at all. Technicolor video cassette, which is really called uh, CVC. The formats like Video 8. The Sanyo V Chord 2. They were a time machine. Some of them were brilliant. Some of them were absolutely stupid. All of them are interesting as footnotes in history. The video cassette. It's very common in the late 20th century. March 17th, 1978, a momentous happening in the Ray Glasser video light. So we're going to open my new Betamax. Now one point I should make.